Welcome to Learn the Electrics. This video looks at the practical testing assessment for Part P registration. It answers the question of what should you do and make sure that you know when preparing for your Part P practical testing assessment. All members of Part P competent person schemes are required to have an annual visit from their assessor and to demonstrate their continuing skills by on-site assessment. For those just joining a scheme, there is a lot of worry about just what they should be doing in preparation for the big day. Exactly what is the assessor looking for with the testing part of the assessment and what best can you do to be successful? But surely testing is just dead testing followed by live testing. We can all do that, can't we? Well, actually, there is a lot more that goes into it than that. It is so important that we look at the whole picture and prepare properly for the assessment day. The objective is, after all, to pass the assessment. Before the day of the assessment, what should you be doing? You will need to demonstrate your testing skills on an installation that you've installed. So when the assessor phones, have an installation in mind that you can talk to him or her about. Agree a date with the assessor and be certain that the date is also compatible with the householder. Your customer might forget about the assessment, so make sure that you remind them a day or two before the visit. It will not go down well if you both turn up to a locked house and no car on the drive. Also, remind the householder that the power will be going off for certain circuits. All this shows the assessor that you are being proactive and professional. Have to hand the electrical installation certificates for the jobs that are being assessed, along with the schedules of inspections and test results and they must be correct and they must be fully completed. No certificates, no pass. Most assessors will accept work on your own house as the assessment installation. The important thing is to talk to the assessor. They are there to help. They want you to have a good assessment. They want you to pass. Before your assessment day, long before, make sure that your meter is in calibration and that you have a calibration certificate for it. You don't want to have a non-conformance raised against you before you even start testing. It is your responsibility to have a working meter in good condition. Make sure the batteries have plenty of charge in them and the test leads are all there and in good condition. And most importantly, do you know how to use the meter? And do you know what the readings mean? The assessor is not there to give you lessons in using your meter, but they will ask questions to test you. Make sure you know long beforehand. Practice, practice, practice. The installation that you show the assessor must be a finished, completed job. The assessor does not want to see you still working on the installation, so make sure that it is 100% completed before the day and that all the certificates are also completed. Briefly explain to the assessor the job that you're going to see and the parts of the installation that were completed by you. For example, we're going to see Mrs. Smith. She lives about two miles down the road. She's just had an extension built for a utility room downstairs with a bathroom and ensuite on the upper floor. And I've installed all the circuits in the extension. The assessor can then select at least two circuits for you to test. You can be pretty certain that if one of those circuits is a socket ring circuit, then that will be one of the chosen tests. Also, ensure there are no distractions whilst testing especially if it is your own house. You don't want children running around, etc. This is a professional assessment of your ability to test correctly. It should be between just you and the assessor. Before you start testing, advise the customer which circuits are about to be turned off. Prepare your tools, get yourself set up. And you should know which tools you need if you have just installed the circuits. From this point on, think safety. Part of the assessor's job is to observe that you are working safely at all times. You can fail the assessment for not working safely. And some breaches of safe working are an instant assessment fail. We should always begin with dead testing. You must carry out a safe isolation of the circuit under test. And this can be an instant fail for unsafe working. Always prove your test instruments are functioning correctly before each testing sequence. And I always tell people to talk as you test. That way, the assessor can follow what you are doing. And 
Expect to be asked questions about the tests as you work through them. It doesn't mean that you've made a mistake. The assessor is just probing your knowledge and understanding. It's part of their job. You should move through the tests in the correct order, as shown here, and also in the wiring regulations and in many other publications. Randomly attacking the tests in no particular order will not impress the assessor. Depending on what you've been asked to test, begin with the continuity of conductors, the main bonding cables and supplementary bonding cables, the continuity of the circuit protective conductors or CPC, and the ring circuit conductors. And then you can move on to insulation resistance testing and polarity testing. Can you, for instance, explain what all these tests do, what results to expect and what they mean? Can you explain why you might do the polarity test at the same time as the continuity test? If the answer is no, then now is the time to start learning what they all mean. The assessor will put you on the spot with questions. If you want to make a good impression, you need to know. It is actually part of your job as an electrician to know these things. So what is the continuity test doing? We want to prove that the copper conductor is continuous from one end to the other. It is measured in ohms and a low reading is a pass. You should expect very low readings for main bonding cables, while CPC resistances will vary between circuits. You may be asked to explain, for instance, why a smaller size or cross-sectional area will increase resistance, or why a longer cable run will increase resistance. And remember the test voltage for a continuity test is between 4 and 9 volts and just a few milliamps of current. Make sure you can test a single conductor, such as a bonding cable, using a wander lead. Can you conduct an R1 plus R2 test on a radial circuit? Do you know how to test a ring circuit? And what is little R1 and little R2? What is big R1 and big R2? And so on. How do we calculate R1 plus R2 for ring circuits? You need to know these things. If not, look at some of our other videos on ring circuit testing, radial circuits, etc. And we will leave links in the description to this video. Insulation resistance is always tested after continuity. But why? This test proved that the plastic insulation is intact, no breaks or nails in the cable, and typically 500 volts will be put between two copper conductors at a time to prove that the voltage cannot jump from one conductor to another. In domestic single phase installations, this will be between live neutral, live earth and neutral and earth. And remember, a high reading is a pass. Make sure you know the numbers that are shown in the tables and you must know what a pass result is and what is a fail. And what precautions must you take for certain installed or attached equipment? If extra low voltage circuits are installed, selve and pelve, then these should be tested too. Shaver sockets are not extra low voltage, they are low voltage, but they do contain a safety isolating transformer. And finally, for dead testing, the polarity tests. These prove that the phase wire is the wire that is being switched and not the neutral. These are often carried out at the same time as the continuity tests. Can you explain to the assessor why? We can now move on to live testing. To begin with, prove the polarity of your supply. Then carry out a ZE test, an earth fault loop impedance test. And this is measured in ohms. It is the resistance path of the external copper from the consumer unit to the supply transformer and all the way back to the consumer unit. Using ZE, your meter should be able to display a prospective fault current in amps. And do you know the difference between prospective earth fault current and prospective short circuit current and how the meter readings will be affected in a TT system? Or do you know how the ZS figures might change in a TT system? The assessor can ask you questions on any part of the testing. They're looking for confirmation that you really do know what you are doing and why. Make sure you do the required ZS tests. You must know how to test ZS, the earth fault loop impedance. And you absolutely must know where to find the ZS information for different types and ratings of breaker and fuse, 
expect to be asked questions. Can you use the correct terminology and can you describe a circuit to the assessor? Look at this drawing. Can you label it correctly from the choice of words and symbols in the box? Knowing this drawing is key to understanding any circuit. And what earthing system is being used here? And what other earthing systems are there? Now, move on to RCD testing. Show that you can test the RCDs at times a half, times one, and times five, and explain why you do these tests. And quote the maximum trip times for each range, and prove that the RCD test button works. And lastly, to functional testing, demonstrate that the circuit works, that the switches turn the appliances on and off, that the circuit breaker disconnects the circuit. Please remember to reset RCDs and circuit breakers back to the on position. You don't want a phone call from the customer in two hours that her fridge has just defrosted itself all over the kitchen floor. All that's left now is to make good, replace the covers, prove the circuits are functioning as intended and leave the customer with a working installation. In summary, the assessor wants you to pass the assessment. It is up to you to prove to the assessor that you have a professional attitude and a healthy commitment to the trade. That you can demonstrate that you can work safely and competently and that you can prove your knowledge and understanding of testing to a satisfactory level. And show that you can use your test meter proficiently and understand the readings. You are the one that has stood up and said you want to be an electrician. Now is your chance to prove it. Treat the assessment very seriously practice and revise for it as you would for an exam. An assessor could always tell if you don't know your stuff and they could also tell if you do know it and that's half the battle to passing the assessment. Well we hope you found this video from Learn the Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you have added some more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below you'll have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us too and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our efforts are worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.